Shabbat up, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back, we just surfing the wave. <laughs> Shout out to CJ Battle, man, who put it in last night, man, for the turf thirds, man. Oh, man. Every we Thursday we get up. in. We are eating up, I told y'all we back, I told y'all we back. Man, we got CJ Battle live for turf thirds. Turn up. In the ether, be a sponsor, be a dragon sponsor on the wall. CJ Battle, man, Eat the squad. It's honor, my brother. This is your opening drop. It's your platform. It's your floor, man. Please just uh, give Drop Nation whatever you want, man. Just take it there, brother. Just take it there, man. Welcome, brother. Opening drop from CJ Battle. Wow. Yosef the real word selection. Yeah, messages across. One drop, baby. Look, man, this is the reason why we even invented the opening drop, man. Just so you could just come in and say blue. Le blue. Blue. CJ Battle got the drop. Hip the real, what it do? Get this drop, man. Oh, man, we're having a good time for that turf thirds, man. Shout out to CJ Battle. Be a sponsor. Be a dragon sponsor on the wall, man. Come over here and surf the wave. And, uh, you know, we got about 22 tribal members dropping this drop every single day, man. So every single drop, man, that you drop here goes equally to all 22 of us. So you get to see us build, man. Um, you know, becoming hijack free, making our exodus. This is our exodus plan. You know, you'd be a sponsor on the wall. You'd be sponsoring the exodus of the whole team. A lot of these, man. Shout out to the monarchy, man. Just ripping up Texas, man. A lot of this, uh, you know, great tribe right here. They have shows. They got, you know, you got Ty Battle, her show, KB, RKJ, Chrissy D. You know what I mean? It goes on and on, man. So, CJ Battle, man. Yo, so, you know, I love the monarchy and I love the fam that's dropping it all across the plane. So every single drop you drop on us goes equally, equally to every single one of our tribal members that's dropping it in the ether. And you get to support their goals, their vision, and then, you know, really support us securing our land, building our land up, man. So that's what we're really putting our money up, making it happen. So be a copper, silver, or gold dragon. Shout out to all the new dragon sponsors, man. We got our first gold dragon sponsor, Zion Train, what it do, Yosef the Real. Silver Dragon sponsor, and we just got a new Copper Dragon sponsor today, man. So I'll be, uh, you know, putting a whole dragon room up where you can come up and you'll see all the dragons on the wall, all the Copper, Silver, and Gold sponsors that are sponsoring the drop, making it happen for the tribe, keeping the water flowing, and keeping the fire burning. Hawa, hawa, hala, hala, hawa, we just surfing away. Hawa, hawa. We just talking Hawaii. We just talking Hawaii. Love to Jackie Anthony, cause this drive right here, man, is uh, <laughs> is dedicated and brought to you, man. You know, majorly by Sister Jackie Anthony, much of how Jackie Anthony. We gonna surf the wave with this Hawata, with this dragging canoe, 
We're gonna get into the Chickamauga, Cherokee, American Revolution. You know, the the split, the breakup between the Chickamauga, so-called Chickamauga, which translates to River of Death, by the way. I mean, it gets deep. When you talk dragon canoe, it gets real deep, man. When you talk the river of death, Chickamauga, according to soldier rumor, is a Cherokee word meaning river of death. River it certainly of lived death. up to that grim sobriquet in September 1863 when the Union Army of the Cumberland and Confederate Army of Tennessee waged blood. Jerumer is a Cherokee word meaning river of death. River of death. We're just talking dragon canoe, right? Dragon Canoe was a Cherokee war chief who led a band of disaffected Cherokee against colonists and United States settlers in the Upper South. Jim so he led the army against the invader. Now what's popping with these Chickamauga, man? I say I love to Jackie Anthony because she's been, you know, dropping these jewels on us and we've been collecting them, man, and building and building and building. When you talk Chickamauga, you're talking the start of this particular corporate invasion. When you talk Chickamauga, you say, oh, America's been at war 93% of the time, 222 out of 239 years since 1776. So this is a warring a warring corporation, a, a military operation right here in America, just like everywhere else that we invade, we keep invading them. We stay at war with the native people, with nature, with the native flow. So it's not that the continent has been at war, it's that the corporation claiming the title of America has been warring against the reality all this time and who's the who's the reality and who is the war against from the very start it's against the chickamauga the chickamauga 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 come on man chickamauga 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 come on man all the way, man, up to 95. That's almost 20 years since 1776. The first 20 years. And it just keeps going against the Indian. The Indian, Barbary, all Indian wars. Seminole, Seminole, Seminole. Cherokee, 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 Cherokee. Seminole, Seminole. Mexican American, Texas, Texas, Indian, Texas, Indian. All these are Negro wars. Negro war. All you see is Negro war, Negro, because they invaded the Negro, the Israelite, the Hebrew, right here in America. All against the Hebrews. This is war against the Hebrews. This is war against the Hebrews. Now we get into an international war because they finally got the Hebrews in check. They finally took the promised land. And who did it start with? War against the man. Chickamauga. Who is dragging canoe? Click the link below. This ain't no play play. Chickamauga Cherokee were a group that what separated from the other Cherokees. Cherokee is a title that's encompassing many tribes. 
But this particular tribe of Cherokee, who they're calling Chickamauga, separated themselves. They got hijacked free. And the result of them separating themselves from the corporation and everybody that wanted to make peace with the American rebels, the Chickamauga Cherokee were a group that separated from the greater body of the Cherokee tribes during the American Revolutionary War, 1775. Then they go to war in 1776. The majority of the Cherokee people wish to make peace with the American rebels. These are the invaders taking titles. Now you have treaties of peace and friendship. So you have these more Moabite tribes that are claiming this Cherokee title. They're making peace and friendships with European invaders, right? Against the who? Chickamauga. And remember, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship said that they have to, you know, be on the side of the invader. If the invader's in trouble, they got to help them out. I mean, so you were at war. It's a more on more war. I mean, <laughs> look, man, a picture is worth sometimes, you know, thousands of words when we're talking more on more war. Oil painting. Copper colored Templars, copper cl colored Moors, right? Tribe on tribe, more on more. War has already been popping over here. It's already popping. So we're talking about this so-called Caucasian. They're coming into this shit late. Templar Wars, all this stuff is already popping. All melanated, carbonated, dark, copper color, ruddy, whatever you want to call it. Black on black. Up into 70, 76, they said, we want freedom from these black people. But we have to use some of these black tribes to get help against the ones we want to take the land from, the promised land, the fighting for the holy land. So some of these tribes make treaties and some break off, branch off. I mean, we're talking the cross, right? I mean, we're talking the cross, right? We're talking Cafe, right? Catness Cafe, right? We're just talking Cafe. Cafe, oh, Cafe. Cafe. Catness Cafe. Catness first found in Catness. X marks the spot. That's taking you to Cathay. That's taking you where? Cathay. Right there in the four corners. Yep. India Superior. Right there in the four corners. Yep. All of it. La Florida and La China. Florida, China. Florida, China. Cuba. Well, we're going to talk Cuba, love Jackie Anthony. We're going to talk Cuba. We're just talking Cathay, man. X marks the spot, right? X marks the spot, right? X marks the spot, right? Flag of Alabama. X marks the spot. Why is that important? Why does Alabama play? The Chickamauga Cherokee were a group that separated from the greater body of the Cherokee tribes during the American Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783. The majority of the Cherokee people wished to make peace with the American rebels. Near the end of 1776, following several 
military setbacks and the reprisals that followed. The Chickamauga followers of Headman Dragon Canoe moved with him down the Tennessee River or Hawassi away from their historic Overhill Cherokee towns in the winter 1776 to 1777 relocated in a more isolated area they established 11 new towns in order to gain distance from colonists encroachments from the invaders from the invasion they wanted peace they wanted separation they separated they wanted their zone they wanted distance from the colonists encroachments separation distance the frontier americans associated dragon canoe or dragon canoe we'll get there dragging or dragon let's go and his band with the new town of the chickamauga creek and began to refer to them as Chickamaugas. So they're not called Chickamaugas, they were called after this water. And the water, we just got Chickamauga means, let's get it again. Chickamauga, according to soldier rumor, is a Cherokee word meaning river of death. What? It certainly lived up. River of death. Chickamauga, according to soldier rumor, is a Cherokee word meaning river of death. Body bag, Daniel. Body bag. So, I'm not going out of my way to relate this to a crossing. A river crossing. Remember Anatoly for the Manko, duplicates and phantoms, where's the real story taking place and how recent did this crossing take place? And who are you a descendant of today? Who is Presta John? Who is Hawatha? Who is Dragon Canoe? Come on, man. David to David, love to the Templar, David to David, let's go. Dragon Canoe, all right, his town was associated with the Chickamauga Creek, which means what river of death, who died crossing that river, sounds a lot, sounds a lot like an exodus, and began to refer to them as Chickamauga. You know what's crazy is that you got Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis, Egypt, right? Memphis, Tennessee, and they're leaving Tennessee, moving down the Tennessee River or Egypt, right? Memphis, Memphis, going to Alabama, where apparently in Alabama, oh, we're going to go there. Love to Jackie Anthony. We're going to get all of this. What's popping in Alabama, man? Oh, there we go. X marks the spot. Why is this the flag of Oh man, U.S. invades Mexico. Look at that. Okay, okay, we're just talking. Chickamauga, Chickamauga, Chickamauga. Leaving Tennessee, Memphis, right? Egypt, right? River of Death, Chickamauga, right? The Chickamauga followers of Headman Dragon Canoe 
Dragon Canoe, or their chief, priest, priest king, moved with him down the Tennessee River, away from their historic Overhill Cherokee towns. In the winter of 1776, relocated in a more isolated area, they established 11 new towns in order to gain distance from the colonists' encroachments. The Frontier Americans Associated Dragon Canoe and his band with the new town of Chickamauga and began to refer to them as Chickamauga's River of Death. Five years later, the Cherokee once more moved west and southwest into what is now called Alabama. Establishing five larger settlements. They were then more commonly known as the Lower Cherokee. Whoa, so you have the Upper Cherokee, Lower Cherokee. Sounds like Egypt, man. This term was closely associated with the people of the five lower towns. We're just talking dragging canoe. He is dragging his canoe. Okay. He said he died in 1792. Was a Cherokee war chief who led a band. Oh, every time is every time his Naga's involved, it's a band. It's a gang, right? If it's them, it's 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 a uh, you know some type of you know super group to you it's just oh they're just a band you know oh we're gonna get into these bands man <laughs> who led a band of disinfected or disaffected cherokee look how they writing this against colonists they don't say invaders right so who's writing this the invader is writing this calling themselves colonists and calling you a band dodge the hijack Dodge the mental wordplay. So this dragon canoe is the war chief or the priest king. They want a war chief. Well, why don't they call them war presidents? Because these presidents are making more war than these chiefs. War chief. <laughs> He's a priest king who led his people against the invader. During the American Revolution and afterwards, Dragon Canoe's forces were sometimes joined by Upper Muscogee, Chickasaw, Shawnee, and the Indians of the other tribes and nations, along with British loyalists and agents of France and Spain. The series of conflicts lasted a, series, a decade after the American Revolutionary War. Dragon Canoe became the preeminent war leader among the Indians. King of the Indians, huh? King of the Indians. He served as war chief of the Chickamauga Cherokee, or Lower Cherokee, in 1777 until his death in 1792 when he was succeeded by John Watts. Hijack 101. Hijack 101. Because something about this dragon canoe starts to resonate with the Algonquin. This is in the OSB Dictionary Glossary. Algonquin. The United States of North American Indians before their destruction by the Christians. Resonate with that. We're talking about the king of the Indians, right? The king of the Indians. War chief. Priest king. Dragging canoe. What's the canoe got to do with this? Let's get deeper. Algonquin. The United States of North American Indians. This is hijack free. This is Algonquin. This is Hawata. Hawata. This is Dragon Canoe. Dragon Canoe. The United States of North American Indians before their destruction by the Christians. Let's let's look up. Let's look up Christian. I mean, I can't make this shit up.
Hmm. Wow. Hmm. What's crazy? This is uh, if you could read it, I know the the words are kind of mumbled. This is China, right? This is China, China. The definition of China, so you know it's not some place way over there. A deliverer. A man of China is a deliverer, right? China is Khan, Kana. Ka, ka. It's a hard ka, not a ch, ch. That ch is really that kh, same thing, man. That ka, kina or kana, all right? Contemporaneous with Moses and Capilia. We're going to get this Capilia. This China is a deliverer contemporaneous who live at the same time as Moses get it like it's the first time contemporaneous living or being at the same time 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary I'm not making this shit up. I know. Expand your, expand your brain, your brain bone. Surf the wave because you're gonna have to empty your cup. When we surf the wave, we do it every day. Wow, contemporaneous living or being at the same dang time, same time, same time, same time, same time. China, a deliverer. A man of China or Kana, Khan, contemporaneous with Moses, he lived at the same time. Oh, I forgot. I forgot again. Can y'all help remind me? Where is China? Where's China, man? Where's my map? This is how we tab. This is how we tab surf around here. I always lose my tabs. There we go. Where's China, man? Stop playing. La China. This is North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe. Ooh, what is this? What is this? What is this? China. China is where Mexico would be. Mexico is Moshika, Moshika, Moses, Mozaka, Moses, Mozaka, Moshika, Mexica, Mexico. Mexico is Moshe, Meshi Moshe, like Michigan. Michigan is Michoacan or Moshe Khan. Michigan, Moshe Khan. Khan, priest. Priest Moses. Khan, Michoacan. Priest Moses. Muskegee, all that goes back to Moses. Mexico is Moshe. Moses. And why is China in Moshe? Why is China in Moshe? Why is China in Moshe? Mexico. China. A deliverer, Moshe, a man of China, contemporaneous, lived at the same time with Moses or is Moses. He was to China's great deliverer, Isu. This is what they're getting there, Jesus, the Isu, 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 Isu is how, you know, they're hijacking. It's all this hijack shit, but it's all how... When you get to it, they're just saying that he's like a, you know, pure, pure soul that they're calling Isu, born by birth and wrought miracles, just like Moses. The country China was named after him. China was named after him. I just said, where's China? Body bag, Daniel. 
It's in Mexico. It's in Moshe. Moshe Okan. China is Mexico. China is Mexico. Wakey, wakey. Kana. Khan. Moshe Khan. Moshe Khan. What's Christian? A brotherhood of warriors, Christians, a brotherhood of warriors. They were named Christians in derision, which means mockery, by the Hebrews. The Hebrews were mocking them, calling them Christians. One who rushes into a multitude of rioters and with the sword enforces peace is a true Christian. One who rushes into a multitude of rioters, who they always call you savages. Whenever you get upset, you rioters, right? So this is a person who rushes into some Nagas with a sword or gun and enforces peace is a true Christian. I can't make this shit up. A brotherhood of warriors that rush, rush upon the Nagas with their swords, with their guns. A people whose faith is in arms and standing armies, not Hawaii. Synonymous Brahma, Buddha, Christ, Christe, Baal, Asherith. All this is synonymous with the Christian. Come on, man. Let's go. Iwata, Iwata, a North American Indian. A kind of Abraham with whom he was contemporaneous. Contemporaneous with Abraham? Contemporaneous with Abraham? Are you, are you really saying that Hawata lived at the same time as Abraham? Just like China and Moses? Are they the same people? That's your next question in your investigation. And if you're not investigating right now, then you're not being framed in shape. If you're not investigating right now, you're not being framed in shape. If you're not investigating Hawata, if you're not investigating your priest kings, chiefs, you're not even... <laughs> How can you be framed and shaped if you're not investigating your priesthood? Hosea 3 and 4, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Who's Hawata? And without a prince, and without a sacrifice, without an image, without an ephod, without teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return. Here we go. We're returning. And seek Hawa. It says the Lord their God. Seek your creator. Seek your power. What happens when you return and seek your <gasps> why? And David, their king, or Khan, right, or Wong. Who is Hawata? David is a title, it's a function. Love to the Templar who broke it down beautifully, man. Every David comes with an exodus, and we're reading about an exodus. Something to do with the river of death. Tennessee to Alabama, X marks the spot. If you're not searching this out, maybe you're too hard, maybe you're too concrete. You can't be molded, you can't be formed, framed, shaped, your ego is in the way. You think this is something, you think this is my stuff, this is my shit. Oh, Drop is just doing his shit. Nah, man. This is. <gasps> wow. This is our secure breath. And we listen to the sound.
Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek Hawa, their creator, their power, and David, their king, and shall fear. Nah, man. Nah, man, we don't fear. We don't fear, man. We ain't, we ain't in that fear spell no more. Nah, man. Nah, man, I mean, we, we can't get lost in our translations to fall into fear around here. This is the NASB translation, man. Watch this, man. Watch this. Afterwards, the sons of Israel will return and seek Hawa, their creator, and David, their king, and they shall come trembling to Hawa. When you're trembling, you're humble. It does not have to translate to being fearful. Get out the spell. You've been humbled. Some people tremble when they're when they're happy, when they're overjoyed. Some people tremble when they're, you know what I'm saying, can't contain their excitement, they start trembling. So we don't have to take that translation and fall into fear. Afterwards, the sons of Israel will return, seek Hawa, their power, Dawood, their Khan. And they will come so excited that they can't contain themselves, trembling to Hawa. Doesn't Hawa ask you to rejoice? How can he ask you to rejoice and come trembling in fear? When Hawa asks you to rejoice because the time is near. Because daddy's home, mama's home, mama's waking up. You don't tremble in sadness, you're trembling in joy and humility. You have your zon back. Dies to hijack, English spell, fear spell. Let's get it. That's why we seek. That's why we investigate. That's why we open up all these books with a dragonfly perspective. We can see the Moshe. We can see the China. We can see the Hawata, a North American Indian, a kind of Abraham. Hawata is all over this place. Abraham is nowhere near this place in terms of the, the you know, Brahma, a Brahma, Brahma, a Brahma, a Braham, Ham. Are you sure that's his name? Or are we just talking Brahma? Or are we just talking Christian? I mean, we know the hijack is real. We know the hijacks all throughout this text. Watch how they try to hijack the Wa. Watch this. We know we're just talking Brahma, right? Christians, right? Remember, one who rushes into a multitude of rioters, right? And with the sword enforces peace is a true Christian. A people whose faith is in arms and standing armies. The following words are synonymous. This don't have to mean all these are negative things. It just means that they're used by some people synonymously. Brahma, Buddha, Christ, Baal, Asherah, Dagan, Vishnu, Ashtat, knowledge, wisdom. So we talk knowledge and wisdom all day. We don't have the intention of calling it Christian. But the Christian may try to hijack knowledge and wisdom. And now make it synonymous with themselves. So like I said, it don't mean that knowledge is ne is evil. Wisdom is not evil. Look over here. They put wah. They have to tuck that in. Because that's somehow synonymous with what they're hijacking. Just like wisdom. So they're hijacking wah. They're hijacking wisdom. And they're hijacking knowledge, man. And that's what you call a Christian. Hijack one-on-one. Wow, huh? <laughs> right in our face, bone. And when we talk, I wata, wata, a kind of Abraham contemporaneous. All right. So, what's so important about Hawata? We've been digging on it. Living at the same time 
as Abraham? Or are we talking the same man? Dragon Canoe. I mean, Canoe. Love to Jackie Anthony. We're just talking the Iroquois Confederacy, right? I mean, real simple, right? You can read all this. I'm skipping right down here. We're keeping it flowing. Let's read this paragraph right here together. The origin of the plan is ascribed to the mythical or at least traditional person. So he's a myth. Just like Preston John, just like David, everything about us is mythical. That's key word for a real spill. The more I look at it. Hayoata. Hayoata or Hawada. Hawa of Longfellow celebrated poem who was present at the council and the central person in his management. Let's get it right here. The same tradition further declares that when the work was accomplished, Hawata miraculously disappeared in a white canoe. The same canoe, the same dragon canoe, I mean the same dragon canoe that led the Chickamauga. The same dragon canoe that were fighting all this time. The same dragon canoe. And what happened in his canoe? He disappeared. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to this canoe? What happened to Hawata's canoe? Remember, Hawata, Abraham, contemporaneous, living at the same damn time, man. Or the same guy, the same priest, different titles, different times. For the main goal. Hawata miraculously disappeared in a white canoe. Which arose with him in the air man. Dragon canoe? Dragging canoe? Or dragon? Dragging? Or dragon? Dragging? Or dragon? I mean, it's flying in the air. It's flying in the air. What canoe do you know that flies in the air? Are we just talking a dragon? Are we just talking dragon? Hidden in the English spell. So Hawata, alright? Hawata disappears in a white canoe which arose in the air and bore him out of their sight. So he literally disappeared in a canoe. We're just talking Chickamauga Cherokee. We're just talking their leader, Dragon Canoe. Huh? Huh? Disappeared in a white canoe. Or white dragon. Arose in the air. Bore them out of his. Come on man. Come on man. Other prodigies according to this tradition. Attended and signalized. The formation of the confederacy. So they following the dragon. If he disappeared on a dragon. Or a white canoe. Flying dragon thing. Come on man. Choose your reality which is still celebrated among them as a masterpiece of India wisdom. I just have one question then. Where is India? We just talking Tennessee, Alabama, Mexico, or China, or Moses. Alkaline. 
Peace to the Shabbat Alawa. We focus, man. Let's get it. China, India. Got it. Got it. Got it. We're just talking Chickamauga, man. We're just talking Chickamauga, man. We're just talking dragging canoe. We're just talking Alabama. He served as war chief of the Chickamauga Cherokee. The Chickamauga separated from the greater body of the Cherokee that wanted to sign these treaties, man. Make peace with the with the rebels. And he moved them from Tennessee to Alabama. And you know what the Alabama flag looking like. I mean, we're just talking about the river of death. We're just talking about the river of death. Chickamauga, according to soldier rumor, is a Cherokee word meaning river of death. It certainly lived up to that grim sobriquet in September 1863 when the U. And then they're going to war in battles. You could check this out. All right, so they're going to war in battles in the same place that they that they settled on where X marks the spot, right? Where they settled at the river of death. Jackie Anthony got the drop. Look at all these great links that we're about to get into. Love to Jackie Anthony, so we surfing the wave. Aqua got our back. She she's side by side. And you can see, you know, all kind of other uh, family that she supports, man. She's always dropping drop all over the place. I mean, she dropped this drop on the Hawa tree. I'm like, what? Hawa tree? What's the Genepa Americana? Is there a Hawa tree in America? Oh, man. Genepa Americana is a species of Genepa native to the northern, northern South America, south to Peru. The Caribbean, Southern Mexico. Growing in rainforest, it is commonly called Guinepapo or Huito. The alternative name, Jagua, may refer to other species of Guinepa as well. Listen up. To the Inca, it was known as Hawa. Open your eyes and see clearly. Get your ego out the way and reclaim your heritage. Reclaim yourself. Reclaim your sound. Reclaim your frequency. Reclaim your vibration. Reclaim your vibration. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Time to see clearly, people. Dragon, dragon canoe, dragon. They give you all the serpent talk, right? They give you all the serpent talk. Then they say, oh, it's a stem of Dirk Kastai, meaning to see clearly. Any issue with dragon is an issue with your own clarity, with your own spiral, with your own flow. Do you see clearly? When we talk Hawa, do you see clearly? When you talk Ya, do you see clearly? When you talk Yahweh, 
do you see clearly? Or Jehovah, do you see clearly? Yahweh, based on the assumption that the tetragrammaton is the imperfect of the Hebrew verb Hawa. Earlier form of Heya. Was, in a sense, the one who is the existing, the existing one. So you got to get all the way to that root. And when you get to that root, like my sister Jackie Anthony, you see it all over the place. Hawaii. It was known as Hawaii. In Inca. In America. All right, man. Surf the wave. We're just talking dragon canoe, right? Love to Jackie Anthony. We're about to take it there. We're just talking dragon canoe. Dragon Canoe Let's was the Cherokee drink. war chief who led a band of disaffected Cherokee against colonists and United States settlers in the Upper South. During the American Revolution and afterward, Dragon Canoe's forces were sometimes joined by Upper Muscogee, Chickasaw, Shawnee, and Indians from other tribes, nations, along with British loyalists and agents of France and Spain. The series of conflicts lasted a decade after the American Revolutionary War. Dragging Canoe became the preeminent war leader among the Indians of the southeast of his time. He served as war chief of the Chickamauga Cherokee from 1777 until his death in 1792, when he was succeeded by John Watts. Biography he was the son of a Takalakala who was born to the Nipissing. He and his mother were captured when he was an infant and they were adopted into the Cherokee tribe and assimilated. His mother was Neon Oli, born to the Natchez and adopted as a captive by Okno Stota's household. They lived with the Overhill Cherokee on the Little Tennessee River. Dragon Canoe survived smallpox at a young age, which left his face marked. According to Cherokee legend, his name is derived from an incident in his early childhood. Wanting to join a war party moving against a neighboring tribe, the Shawnee, his father told him he could stay with the war party as long as he could carry his canoe. He tried to prove his readiness for war by carrying the heavy canoe, but he could only manage to drag it. War chief of the Cherokee Dragon Canoe first took part in battle during the Anglo-Cherokee War. In its aftermath, he was recognized as one of the strongest opponents to encroachment by settlers from the British colonies onto Cherokee land. Eventually, he became the headman of Malakwa on the Little Tennessee River. When the Cherokee chose to ally with the British in the American Revolution, Dragon Canoe was at the head of one of the major attacks. After the colonial militia's counterattack, which destroyed the Cherokee Middle Valley and Lower Towns, his father and Okanostata wanted to sue for peace. Refusing to admit defeat in 1777, Dragon Canoe led a band of the Overhill Cherokee out of the towns. Further south, they migrated to the area seven miles upstream from where the South Chickamauga Creek joins the Tennessee River, in the vicinity of present-day Chattanooga. Thereafter, frontiersmen called them the Chickamauga because of the settlement by the creek. They established 11 towns, including the one later referred to as Old Chickamauga Town, quote, this was across the river from where the Scotsman, John Macdonald, the assistant superintendent of the British concerns in the area, had a trading post. He supplied the Chickamauga with guns, ammo, and supplies with which to fight. In 1782, for the second time, the towns were attacked by United States forces. The devastation caused by Colonel John Sevier's troop forced the band to once again move further down the Tennessee River. Dragon Canoe then established the five lower towns below the natural obstructions of the Tennessee River Gorge. 
These were Running Water Town, Nickajack Town, Long Island, Crow Town, and Lookout Mountain Town. Following this move, they were alternately referred to as the Lower Cherokee. From his base at Running Water Town, Dragon Canoe led attacks on wide settlements all over the American Southeast, especially against the colonists on the Holst and Watauga and Nolachaki rivers in eastern Tennessee. After 1780, he also attacked settlements in the Cumberland River area, the Washington District, the Republic of Franklin, the Middle Tennessee areas, and raided into Kentucky and Virginia as well. His three brothers, Little Al, the Badger, and Turtle at home, often fought with his forces. Death. Dragon Canoe died February 29, 1792 at Running Water Town. From exhaustion after dancing all night celebrating the recent conclusion of an alliance with the Muscogee and the Choctaw, he had not brought the Chickasaw into the alliance. The Chickamauga were also celebrating a recent victory by one of the war bands against the Cumberland settlements. Legacy Dragon Canoe is considered by many to be the most significant Native American leader of the Southeast. Historian such the most significant native leader in the Southeast. Who is considered by many to be the most significant Native American leader of the Southeast. Sounds a lot like what they're kicking over here in the OSB. About this Hiawatha, the North American Indian, a kind of Abraham the most significant leader hmm sounds a lot like what they're kicking on is China a deliverer man of China contemporaneous with Moses he was to China a great deliverer the surf the way man with Jackie Anthony man let's go ahead and get it Wow, this is a great link right here. Middle Tennessee's Native American history, Dragon Canoe, the Chickamauga Cherokees, and the Battle of the Bluffs on April 2nd, 1781, during the North American War of Resistance against the occupation of Middle Tennessee by a young United States of America Corporation, a force commanded by the Great Cherokee War leader. I always say war leader, war, they want you to think war, right? Man, priest king, dragging canoe, attacked Fort Nashboro. So he was just jamming these hijacks up, man. That's why you don't hear about this cat. They got all kind of hijack pictures of him now, man. Nah, man. This is a naga that <laughs> was jamming these hijacks up. Attacked Fort Nashboro and founding the founding state of the city of Nashville located on a bluff overlooking the Cumberland River. The raid became known as the Battle of the Bluffs. It can be considered a revolutionary war engagement and is one of the most famous incidents of Nashville early history, man. You can check this link out, man. At the time, Dragon Canoe was the chief of the great island town. He and his followers strongly objected to the sale. They were trying to sell land. 1775 at Sycamore Shows in East Tennessee, a land spec specu speculator named Richard Henderson met with a group of influential, influential Cherokee leaders and convinced a few of them to sell the tribe's claim to 20 million acres. They acting like this is Dragon Canoe, man. Come on, man. Dodge the hijack. Come on, man. They try to get 20 million acres from your tribe. We bought 10 acres as a tribe, and we feel like we taking a step. 20 million acres. 
in a deal that came to be known as the Henderson Purchase or the Transylvania Purchase. And what has got to do with dragons and dragon canoe. This area was an important hunting ground for the Cherokee and many of the tribes. Some of them also had a claim to the area at the time. Dragon Canoe was the chief priest king. Great Island Town. Great Island Town. He and his followers strongly objected to the sale. They said we hijack free. Make no deal with the hijack. During the negotiations, Dragon Canoe predicted that the sailing land would result in the extinction of the Cherokee. He refused to consent. He refused to consent to the agreement even though his father, the renowned diplomat Ata Kulakula, as well as the great war leader Akana Stota, who Dragon Canoe has served under, both supported the deal and signed the agreement. Now, you know, I'm not here to judge nobody harshly. I'm not in a situation. I don't speak on shit I don't know. But I'm just saying, damn, damn, damn. Don't you see how we've been hijacked? Under the Cherokee system of government sessions, of tribal territory required unanimous consent to be considered binding and anyone who disagreed could not be expected to abide to the terms. Dragon Canoe warned that he and his warriors considered the Henderson Purchase Agreement to be illegal and that they would fight for the land, declaring you have bought a fair land or holy land, right? But you will find its settlement dark and bloody. He kept his promise. He kept his promise, man. Go ahead and dig on these these battles that took place, man. Priest King. This is another great link history of Campbell County, Tennessee. Dragon Canoe and the Chickamauga Cherokee. Dragon Canoe often called Tecumse. Uh-oh. Getting more titles. It's going to get us closer to the truth was one of Cherokee's tribe's most devoted chiefs. He angrily opposed the term of the deal in which the Cherokee nation signed away some of the valuable land to the whites and received very little in return. He broke away from the Cherokees in 1776, forming an aggressive wing of the tribe known as Chickamauga Cherokee's Dragon Canoe, strongly recommended that the Patriarch Cherokees to join in parting of the tribe. After this episode, they settled at various places along the mainstream south known as Chickamauga Creek. It was therefore appropriate to call themselves Chickamaugans. Wow, check this out. So you got Dragon, wait, Dragon Canoe was the son of famous narr narrator, Chief Ata Kula Kula. Dragon Canoe chose for his headquarters the site of an ancient Creek village of Chickamauga or River of Death near present day northeast Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hmm, they got some drop. Many well known chiefs joined him. So he had, you know, they had his back. Chief Ostenako, among them, the old Indian, had fought side by side with George Washington on the Virginia frontiers and knew intimately he knew not only our first president but also the likes of Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry, Dragon Canoe's brother, Chief Little Al, also traveled with him. His brother, <laughs> almost sounds like Moses and Aaron, right? Let's go. And settled on a chicken magua less than two miles upstream, the first celebration of Independence Day. Don't you pop off your fireworks July 4th? You're popping them off against Dragon Canoe. You're popping them off against Abraham or Hiawatha, or Moshe, against Israel. The first celebration of Independence Day, July 4th, 1776, took place at Fort Patrick Henry, where Kingsport, Tennessee now stands. It had everything to do with the Chickamauga. It has everything to do with the Chickamauga. Sometimes previous to that date, our whites invited the Cherokees to a meeting of the two forces, the white Man's main object was to win the Indians from the side of the British, totally ignoring the meeting called Dragon Canoe, 
on that first 4th of July remained at home. He was hijacked free. He remained at home in the Chickamauga town, puffing on his trusty pipe, hijack free, falling back, levi up, putting it in the air, falling back like, man, I got to think about this, man. I got to think about this, man. <sighs> Look, man, so much information is here for you to dig on when it comes to dragging canoe, or what do we say? Love to Jackie Anthony, man. We're talking India, right? Hawata miraculously disappeared on the white canoe, which rose him in the air and bore him out of this side. Dragon, dragon, canoe. Let's go. So let's get it, man. Jackie Anthony's dropping that drop on us, man. I think she wanted us to scroll to the very end of this one. We were just talking about the Te Kum Se, right? Te Kum Se is another name for Dragon Canoe. Let's go. As a boy's name of Algonquin, right? <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm just surfing the wave with y'all, man. Algonquin OSB says what? The United States of North American Indians before their destruction by the Christians. The United States of North American Indians before their destruction by the Christians is an Algonquin. The United States of North American Nagas Indians before their destruction by the Christians. The Christians are just rolling up here, mowing everybody down, right? A brotherhood of warriors. A brotherhood of warriors. They were named Christians in derision by the Hebrews. One who rushes into a multitude and with a sword enforces peace is a true Christian. A people whose faith is in arms and standing armies is a Christian. So before they came with their armies to destroy, you were united Indians before their destruction by the Christians. At least you had a confederacy that was united. This doesn't mean that you were united with Moab or united with the Moor, because what happened with Moab or what happened with the Moor, who's calling themselves Cherokee? They wanted to make peace and friendship. So we had to break off and we went to war. We went to war. We went to war first. This is how it popped off, and this is why you popping fireworks. Chickamauga, man. Chickamauga. We're just talking Tecumse. A boy's name of Algonquin. Wakashian origin. Waka. Let go. And the meaning of Tecumse is, man, is this the Black Panther, man? Floating on his dragon? Canoe? <laughs> Tecumse is goes through one place to another. So the meaning of, I can't make this up, man. I love to Jackie Anthony. Tecumse goes through one place to another. Let's back it up. Let's back it up. Didn't I just say, are we talking Waka? Are we talking Black Panther? Watch this. I was reminded of the Indian chief Tecumse or Dragon Canoe or Hawata or Abraham, let's go, and wondered about the meaning of his name. A Google search brought up the Wikipedia entry which says his name means shooting star or panther across the sky or blazing comet. I just asked if this is the Black Panther, right? You, are you witnessing? Halawa. We just said, what? Waka, Algonquin, North American Indians. North American Indians before the destruction by the Christian. Waka, Tecumse. You know, we're just talking. Dragging Canoe, Chickamauga, Tecumse. Tecumse, Waka goes from one place to another exodus he's going from 
Tennessee River with an overhill Cherokee all the way to Alabama crossing the river of death. Goes from one place to another. Panther across the sky. Blazing Comet. Uh oh, we're talking meteors again. And remember in 1828. Oh man, we're just talking a while. <laughs> Remember, man, in 1828, oh, let's get it right here. Look up the definition of Prester, right? We're just talking Prester John. We're just talking priest. Prester, a meteor thrown from the clouds with such violence that by collision it sets on fire. Prester is meteor, comet, priest. A priest is a comet, meteor. Meteor is a dragon. Dragging canoe. Dragon. Dragon. Meteor. Oh, you want to know the definition of dragon? A fiery shooting meteor. Or imaginary serpent. Dragon is meteor. These meteors are dragons. Ye dragons at night. Or they're you people. A fierce, violent person, male or female. This man or a woman is a dragon. Hey, meteor. Prester, meteor. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I can't make this shit up. So this Prester, this Hawata, is a Black Panther. A what? A Waka? A Panther? A Comet? Or a Meteor? Or a Prester. Right? Okay. Oh, the sister's searching for the Sali prophet. Prophet. So he, this prophet situation keeps coming up. We're talking Prester, prophet. We're talking the Hawa, the Hawa tree. <laughs> Let's go. The city searching. The, the sister started searching for Cuba in etymology. Ba Cuba, Ba Cuba. This is your Cuba. Remember, Columbus is looking in Cuba, right? Cuba, the real Cuba. They say Iraq. Now nah, we're talking Cuba or what? Jacobs. House. Jacob's house. Cuban city, Havana, in etymology. Apparently, the name of local native people. You know, the V is hijacked, so we're talking Hawana. Hawana, Cuba. Hawana, Cuba. And why is that important? Because remember, oh, remember, oh, oh, remember. Columbus is looking for who? The Grand Khan. A week before he lands in Guanahani, Columbus opinions that Pizan's suggestion to stay southward is not made with respect to Capango. Two days after the journey, he feels he must go on to try to find Capango, and when he reaches Cuba, he believes it from the signs the Indians make to be this very land. At the same time, he is equally anxious to reach the mainland of China. He is determined to deliver the letters of the Catholic kings to the Grand Khan. We know that China is contemporary with Moses, right? And we know that China is where? China's right here. Cuba's right here. So they're going to say this is 10 days apart, right? They're going to say this is 10 days apart, right? So he's looking for the Grand Khan, right? The Khan, right? The Presta, right? The Khan, right? The Grand Khan, right? 
Native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or originals, natural, copper, color, races, copper people found here, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born here. They took your con just like that. They got born here and took your con. Columbus is looking for who? The Grand Khan near China, near China, India, Superior. He's lost in India, right? India, India, China. With the said Grand Khan, he gathers from the signs the natives, or he gathers from the natives, is a, Hu a Cuban monarch was now at war. We just got that Cuba is Jacob's house. Love to Jackie Anthony. A Cuba monarch is now at war. The Khan's great ships, he understood, came to Cuba. Ten days journey from the Chinese mainland. So you know we ain't talking way over here. It takes three or four months for them to come from here to here, right? Here to here. So we're talking ten days. We're talking China or Mexico and Cuba. Mexico to Cuba. Ten days. Not the other China or Kana. Remember China. Remember, China is a deliverer, a man of China contemporaneous with Moses. Great deliverer, Moses, great deliverer, Moses. Why is China in Mosheka, Mexico, Moses, Moshi? And why are we talking about Cuba 10 days journey from China or Mexico? The cotton of the West Indies would be sure to make a good market in his cities. His majesty was perhaps in the grand city of Cathay. We're talking Cathness. We're talking Cathayo. We're talking the Rus, who are from where? First found in Cathness. Cathay, Cathy, Cathay, Cathness. We're only talking about the lost tribes of Israel identity people. Cathay. Cathness, China, Kana, Canada. It is certain, he writes, while still off the Cuban coast, that I am in front of Zato and Ginsei and Amoy Harbor in Hong Kyo, and again in Cariba and Caniba, which was described to him as the mainland behind Espanola in our language, the north coast of South America. Columbus believes he has at last located the name and kingdom of the Khan. Hawa, Hawa, allow Hawa to the tribe. Allow Hawa for the inspiration of vibration. Allow Hawa for the sister Jackie Anthony showing us where Jacob's house is in Cuba. Letting us know that we got the Hawa, we got the Hawa. We got the Hawa right here, South America, Peru, Hawa. We got the Hawa tree popping off, man. Hawa. We're just talking about Tecum Sa, who is a what? Panther, a Waka, a Algonquin, a shooting star, a, a, a blazing comet, a meteor, a prester. We're just talking resurrection, although it says it refers to a shooting star with or without the reference. It seems awfully interesting to me. In Hebrew, the word for tekuma means resurrection. Body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. And in Algonquin, the word tekumse means goes through one place to another. Resurrection in Hebrew. Takum say means resurrection in Hebrew. Goes from one place to another. Resurrection. Dragon canoe. Cherokee war chief. Dragon canoe or tekum sa is resurrection in Hebrew. So we know we have a Hebrew prophet, a prester, making a crossing. Which is why X marks the spot in Alabama. Cherokee once more moved further west and southwest until now Alabama. After they 
crossed this river from Tennessee to Alabama. What's the drop? What's the drop? Who are the Chickamauga? And what's the war all about? At the end of the day, we need to break free. At the end of the day, we need to break free. We need to keep reaching, man, for our tree. We're talking the tree, right? Shekinah, love to AD. The Shekinah. Let go. We're talking the feminine deity, right? Or your mama. This is cold word for mama. Dodge all the hijack Kabbalah. This is cold word for mama. Wow. The word Kabbalah means to receive. As in to receive lore or wisdom, your framer and shaper, mama. Traditional Kabbalah is a mystical tradition within Judaism. Daj Yo Hijack. The modern Kabbalah is essentially the same tarot cards, but tarot cards closely resemble the Kabbalistic tree of life. They're hijacking mama. And this fact has closely studied, been studied by scholars. The Kabbalah is embodied in the tree of life. That's what we're talking about. The tree of life which has also become the basis of mystical orders of the Western mysticism. To understand the tree of life, we must explore the who? Shekinah. Love to the sister Shekinah, surfing the wave in the ether every day. Mysterious feminine deity, we're just talking mama, mystery mama. Shekinah is the embodiment of the unique Kabbalistic wisdom. Shekinah is wisdom. So when you got the wisdom of Solomon and all that, this is Mama. This is Mama Nay, Shakina. Embodiment of unique wisdom. Doctrines of love, faith, righteousness. Come on, man. As the tree of life describes the Kabbalah, the Shakina describes the actions of the tree. The tree is based upon the idea of lower and higher, and the Shekinah is the divine presence, and it descends from heaven out of love. Heaven, it descends from your father, your mother descends to accompany the faithful and righteous in their ascent. Mama's here to help you call on your creator, call on your father, just like Solomon, and ask for wisdom, ask for Shekinah, your mama. She is within you. She is hidden all around us in matter. The tree of life embodies a theory that is common in mysticism, a theory of emanation. That is a theory of animism, animating, animate, animism, that everything emanates or radiates or is animated with energy, frequency, vibration, only divided up into a series of hierarchically descending radiations from Godhead down. Godhead is your Wa. Your Shekinah is your Ha or <gasps> Breath, Mama. So you have the framer and shaper, Mama and Daddy being present. The union, wisdom, radiates from Godhead down <laughs> into matter. This scheme also represents the soul's rise into heaven along this along certain paths. The Shekinah links the above with the below within yourself. As she descends from heaven to accompany man in his descent, she is the spirit which accompanies a just man. Specifically, she is the heart of love within the word. What's the word? The word is sound, frequency, vibration. Specifically, your mama, Shekinah, is the heart of love, Eha. Within the sound, the word. She's the heart within the word. That's what wisdom is, the heart within the word. Wow. Which allows for a just reading of Torah or law. So you thought they were going to go left on you. They took you right back to Torah. Took you right back to your law. Your mama is the heart within the law. The heart within Torah. These are her laws. But also the spirit or angel or dragon, which responds to just reading. It is said that the light of the Shekinah is lit within nature and within our hearts. From the beginning, her presence imparts 
the divine meaning and she is also the synthesis of every sacred word. <gasps> wow! She's the breath, the synthesis. The breath is, is, is the synthesis. Without the breath, you have no synthesis. A fire cannot burn without breath. Without oxygen, there is no fire. So how can you have a fiery sun, right? They want, to, they want you to think you got a fiery ball in space with no oxygen in a vacuum of space. Show me that in science. Show me a scientific experiment with a ball burning in a vacuum with no oxygen, with no breath. You need the breath to get the fire. Shekinah is lit within nature, within our hearts. Her presence imparts a divine meaning. She is also the synthesis, the breath <gasps> of every sacred word. Wow! From time immemorial, that means forever, this wisdom, your mama, has been associated with the feminine, the oracle, which imparts the divine meaning. But she is not the divine word. She is not why. She is not your shaper. She is your framer. The Shekinah is not only the divine word. It's not only the divine word. And the righteous word of the mouth, but also the visible presence of divine spirit. She appears clothed in a veil of light, yet behind this another veil of light. And so she is revealed as light, yet concealed at the same time. To penetrate one part of the truth is to be confronted with another mystery. Until finally one reaches the highest point on the tree, the emanation called the crown. Where the masculine and feminine are one. So, the Shekinah is not only the divine word. There we go. Because it embodies, she embodies all. The synthesis, the air, the breath. The growth that finally reaches the highest point of the tree. The emanation called the crown. I love to see Jay Battle talking about that blue, that blue. We're talking crown chakra frequency where the masculine and feminine are one. This is the union of the Shekinah and God in heaven, your father, your mother and father, or the heavenly paradise equated with the indivisible selfhood when you find your way back to yourself or the unity of the sexes. From the highest point in descending order comes the second emanation called Kakma or wisdom or the third emanation Bana or understanding both of which are considered to be Shekinah. <sighs> crown, chakra and wisdom together these three emanations crown, wisdom and understanding form the supernal or heavenly realm and indicate the Shekinah above or supernal mama, mother, mother, mother. You're talking about masculine and feminine one, framer and shaper, union of Shekinah and God in heaven or heavenly paradise equated with the indivisible selfhood. That's your journey, my naga. Find your way back to yourself, which is your union, your union. Mama and Daddy, Framer and Shaper. Wow. We're just talking about our Framer and our Shaper. Wow. Because when they came over here and found you, they got documentation of what the most popular deity or power that our people were rocking with. And when we dig on it, it's right here in our face bone. Click on the link below for the dismount. Framer, shaper. Framer refers to one who makes something by putting things together. That's Mama, that's Shekinah. This is out the Papuva, Quiches of the Maya. So we're not getting hijacked from no invader. 
building from a stone or adobe a meal from various ingredients man shout out to chef candy putting it all together or woven cloth from individual threads bringing it all together your father is your shaper i i i have shaped you i i have molded you out of clay right that's the sound that's the frequency that's the vibe that holds it together refers to one that makes something by modeling or molding pottery from clay or a sculpture from carved stone thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance the framer and the shaper mama and father masculine feminine are the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants the framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned power involved in creation of the world right here in America. Their names imply the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing. This pair of gods or mama and daddy, these powers, Hawa was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Viso use their quiche names, root name, to refer to the God of the Old Testament. Body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. So your framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers right here in this entire world right here. Domenico de Vizio used their quiche names to refer to the God of the Old Testament letting you know that there's a difference between the God of the Old Testament and what they were pushing when they got here. This Father Domenico, this missionary, was not pushing the God of the Old Testament. He was just learning about the true creator when he got here. And they were pushing Zeus. He is Zeus. And if you're still following that son over there, you're in a Hebrew name or not, you're still following their Zeus. You need to come on home and return hijack free to your frame and shaper, one who puts something together and one who makes something by molding pottery from clay, giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. Their names imply that creation involved giving frame and shape to matter. We're getting scientific now that already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing. This pair of gods was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Vizio used their quiche names to refer to the God of the Old Testament. Torah, Torah, Torah. We're just talking Shekinah. We're just talking Mama. Masculine and feminine, this union this union of the Shekinah and God in heaven or heavenly paradise equated with indivisible selfhood. Her presence imparts a divine meaning and she is also the synthesis of every sacred word. Specifically, she is the heart of love within the word. Wisdom, which allows for a just reading of the Torah or law. Much of high family, man. Keep surfing the wave. Go ahead and get here, man, in the drop chat. I'd love to Aboriginal Q Harlem. Excellent surfing the wave right now. We just getting busy, man, in the drop chat and joining, man. Password is still. It's still one, two, three, four to get to through the dough. Make sure you register. So you got all the drop, man. Get get it in live, man. We're getting it in every night. Please, uh, you know, sponsor the home team, sponsor. The 22 tribal members that's doing this on a daily basis, it goes equally to every single individual that's dropping shows in the ether. And it's going to help us build our land and buy our land, support the drop gear, the drop shop and all that. And support this brother right here, man. Hip the Real. Super dope, man. Yosef the Real has a show, Energy Frequency, Tokef Banak. We're talking understanding and power. And it drops, man. Um every single uh saturday man i mean a sunday excuse me you can get our schedule man you can check the schedule out anytime you know how we drop it 
You know how we dropping in the ether. You gotta stay up, man. You know, we're getting framed and shaped. Framed and shaped. Can't be afraid to be molded in this time. Can't be afraid to release. To empty our cup. To get the drop. To get the healing due. To surf the way, man. Don't be afraid to surf the way, man. Stay aboard. Get back on the board. You get washed up. You, you, you find yourself ashore. Jump back in the water, man. Find yourself. Find your way back to yourself. Claim your selfhood. Claim your power. Get your power back, man. A wah, wah. Loud wah. Yeah, you can come over here, man. I'm just pulling it up because I'm still editing. Wow. Yosef the Real. Yeah, it's my Sunday lineup. Sunday, 7 o'clock, man. So you see how we dropping here. My Jigga, 6 o'clock. Yo, Seth, the real seven, RKJ, eight, AD at nine, drop artist, man. That's the Sunday lineup. Monday, you got Yohanna to Hebrew, Prince at six, Carameo at seven, X Islands at eight, Karelu at nine. Then we go into the drop off, man. Four hours of just getting it in every night. Then we got a uh, KB to Sazan at six on, on Tuesday, Templar at seven, Draconology 101, man, with Khan drop at eight. The Sister Poetry is debuting her new show at 9, Tuesday at 9. Then we got the drop-off, man. Then we got Ty Battle, nine, uh, 6 o'clock on Wednesday. CJ Battle, 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Miss D in the Cup of Color dropping her drop at 8 o'clock Wednesday. Chrissy D, Expression Sessions popping off 9 o'clock on Wednesday. Drop-off, man. Then you got uh, Thursday's Turf Thurs. Love to CJ Battle. We interview an artist. Uh, producer, music, you know what I mean? Uh, visionary, man. Every Thursday, we call it Turf Thursday. From our turf to yours, from Inglewood, Cali to you. Man, Confresh drops it 6 o'clock on Thursday. Big Brother Nature comes in 7 o'clock on Thursday. Chef Candy comes in at 8 o'clock. Press the John Hour at 9, drop off. And then Friday, man, we got DJ Noski, man. The Flies DJ in LA, man, dropping a live mix. Every uh, Friday from 4 to 6 for the Nolski Traffic Jam from 4 to 6. Thai Battle Poetry comes in at 6. A whole hour to catch up on all the poetry throughout the week. Dedicated to Thai Battle Aqua Thai. We got the Torah Only Sessions with Khan Drop going down, man. 7 o'clock Friday. Hot Khan Higher Mark hits you over the head with log after log. 8 o'clock on Friday. Press the hour at 9, drop off. Then Saturday, watch out, man. We got Thai Battles, Crystal Show. Crystal Essentials coming in at 5 o'clock Saturday. Zon reading with Chef Candy, getting that Coronado Expedition on. Esteban Nico on. Then we got the drop interview hour. Replaying our Thursday interview with our artists for Thursday, Turf Thurs. We got that interview going 7 o'clock Saturday, followed by Isaac Ford's Frequency Rehab. Two hours of the best music from 8 to 10. Get at Isaac at 432thedrop.com to get in that frequency rehab. Get at KB at 432thedrop.com to get your features, to get all your joints, you know what I'm saying, spinning on 432, 24-7, man. Hit us up, 432thedrop.com. And then again, when you become a dragon on the wall, when you become a dragon on the wall, you're sponsoring the whole tribe that's dropping it. You know what I mean? On the wall, man. This is the wall of protection. Go hit us up, man. Show us that aha. And uh, man, we got to show that aha to yourself. Again, Saturday at, at 7, man. Yourself will be dropping live, man. Live up on us, man. So he got that energy, frequency. He comes from such a sincere, you know what I'm saying, expertise on the vibration, man. So we got to enjoy it. Enjoy this, man. This is called Reunion. Let's take it to the disc route. Yo, Seth, the real Shibata, huh? Tribe, uh, Vibe, uh.
hard in it. My palm, we play the part. Moving silent, more to get by out of it. Taking the game apart. Let's decision, keep the integrity of this room or you gon' leave. Let her climbing with this rhyming, bitch. I'm loyal to the team. The game got war in it. By far, we play the part. Moving silent, more to get by out of it. Taking the game apart. Let's decision, keep the integrity of this room or you gon' leave. Let her climbing with this rhyming, bitch. I'm loyal to the team. Peace.